Hey guys, Mitch here from Fabro Performance and Fabrication. In this episode, we're going to put that 80 series diff in this N70 Hilux. So if you like to see some stuff getting chopped up and welded in, this is the episode for you. So this is the new project. We have a N70 Hilux. Uh, getting a full frontal chop out and putting 80 series gear and uh, King shocks in it. So this is an 80 series front diff that we're going to throw under this. Uh, it's going to be fully stock 80 series setup apart from the coilovers. So we're going to have radius arms and all that jazz underneath. Um, so we've got to basically do a bit of chopping. Um, all of this big ugly subframe stuff all that, all that crap's coming out and see if we can make it drive real nice with the stock 80 setup. Um, at the moment, we're dealing with about that much droop. It's already left the ground. You probably didn't even see it really. So it's not great. So all of this is going to get chopped out. So that whole subframe's coming out. Um, this guy's also going to come out, I'd say. Yes, definitely. Yeah, he's all going to get chopped out. Um, all this is going to get chopped out. So basically, I think we're going to try and get it just down to two chassis rails up in the front here. Um, and then kind of just work off that. And then we'll yeah, might end up replacing that for something a bit stronger. I don't know, we'll see, but I think we're gonna just drop the, like we'll pull the engine out and gearbox out and just get cutting because there's a lot of cutting to do straight away. So we're just gonna pull the whole lot out, have a nice clean area to work out of and um, get this thing nice and bare. Start again. Shirtfire's got his glasses on, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Let's get into it. Disconnecting everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so we decided to come out through the top with the whole lot, engine and gearbox. So Brendo is just removing everything. Take all this stuff off, take the support bar out and just come out Straight out the front, easiest way. Get a time lapse going. Brendan's just realizing how much cutting he's got to do. Too much. Too much. Too much. <laughs> we got to go. Oh yeah, we got the engine out. I'll tell you that first. We got the boy out, but it... if you see how much cutting we got to do, you'll understand why we took the engine out. So 
all of this subframe, gone. All of this, gone. All of that, gone. All of that, gone. And just, you know, tidy it all up and um, get it ready for all the chassis bracing, etc. that needs to happen. So it's a fair bit on. And then, um, you know, we've got to put power steering boxes and there's, uh, there's all sorts of stuff going down. So yeah, the rack's got to come out too. Diff's coming out. It's just going to be completely bare. So we thought, why not? It's actually going to be quicker, really, to be honest, having everything out. The amount of stuff that's going to happen. So let's get into it. Again, again, again. Brendo's been busy. So he's dropped it all out. We got the knuckles and the diff. So she's pretty, she's pretty empty now. So I think tomorrow morning, we're gonna wrap the car up, get some blankets on the paint, and then start hacking. But you can clearly see what needs to happen now. So delete, 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 clean up everything. And make room for some solid axle action. Very cool. Alrighty, car's all wrapped up. We're gonna start cutting away at this body now. Get it all freshened up and ready to start adding some cool bits to it. Get this into a time lapse for you. That's better. You can see by the amount of mess, how much metal's on the floor, how much we've taken off. Look at that. Pretty cleaned up now. Shirt fire's been busy. So no more shock towers, no more subframes, no more mounts. It's looking pretty clean. So now we can start having a look at some bracing and uh, where things are gonna go. Give it a big clean up. All right, we're just about to um, offer up the housing underneath uh, the N70. We're just figuring out where all our brackets and stuff go. We got um, one of the cross members in now, just loosely bolted up. And we've got subframe in here where the radius arms will bolt to. So I'm just gonna put the jig table under here and get the diff underneath it and start sort of like rough assembling things.
go down with the hoist now. Brendo's <laughs> Brendo is holding the ankles. Let's go. Pretty much ready to drive away in a sec. No, you'll get that. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, is it just rubber bushings? Just push them. There you go. You'll get it. Oh, yeah. That's it. Look at that. Radius arms are in. The dip is in. We are starting to come back together again after chopping everything out. Oh yeah, Brendo's also put some chassis plates in. So they're tacked on. And there's uh, another one on the inside. Another one there as well. So we've started putting um, the steering box on there, having a look at how that's gonna work. Um, and just decided that probably should cut these off because it's getting coilovers. So we don't actually need them anymore. And we're gonna need to make mounts for the coilovers and stuff like that so we are going to just quickly unbolt the diff and take it over to the plazzy and um, lob those mounts off clean it up and then we can put her back under looking nice and clean now. Chef, I just lobbed off those um, spring perches and um, we've left the pan hard mount. Uh, what we're going to do is when we start uh, designing and making our um, shock mount, it's probably just going to slip over here like factory and then weld to the pan hard mount, which is what Toyota did in the first place anyways. So that's the idea anyways. Things might change as we get it in the car, but um, now we've actually got a good starting point. It's looking good. Good job, mate. Cheers, mate. Um, and then, yeah, we've just got some stuff G-clamped on at the moment. So we'll put it back under the car. Continue. Shirt fire's been busy once again. So he's got the uh, swivel hubs dry fit at the moment, just so that we can uh, get the wheel on and sit on the ground and cycle the shocks, etc. So um, he's just uh, putting some ratchet straps on it now so that it doesn't uh, go to the moon when he lifts the hoist up. Oh yeah, as you can see, look at that. She's in there. How exciting. Looks good. Good morning. Did you sleep in the car park, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on the tools. Oh, fuck it, now. Gusseted and plated and um, reinforced the factory subframe, gearbox subframe uh, mounts so that they're much stronger as they're going to be bearing radius arms now. So that's looking a lot beefier, a lot more trustworthy. So 
the next step for me is we do so many of these diffs um, and all sorts of stuff with them that I thought I should probably just draw it up in CAD and then I can forever have it and do whatever I want with it, make brackets or use it to measure things or whatever. So um, while Shirtfire has been welding and sitting things in place and stuff, I have been making the 80 series diff in the computer. So this is what I've got. Um, so we've got the radius arm mounts and the pan hard mount on there. And that's pretty much all that I really need because we cut those coil towers off and do coil stuff, coil over stuff always. So um, yeah, I mean, it's here, I can use it now. Um, and we've also got uh, in the computer, we've made up like a bare diff. So if I cut all the mounts off, I mean, we can do whatever we want with that. Um, so yeah, I reckon this will come in handy. And so now we're up to the stage where we've got to do some coilovers and stuff. And all this stuff is in the computer now. So it's just a matter of making, finding out where we want our coilover and then making a bracket to suit and then cutting it out with a plazzy and then sticking it on. So I hope this makes life a lot easier. Um, and now I can also do all sorts of things with this. Like I can do flipped arm mounts and all sorts of crap. So yeah. So you'll notice we uh, threw the fresh sticks in it. So we've got the front and the rear one. Um, and we've also got a adjustable pan hard rod so that we can start shifting this thing around and getting it nice and central. Uh, the problem we're having at the moment is that the pan hard rod and the steering arm um, weren't really sitting uh, parallel and also were quite off center. So we're just trying to fix that up now by adjusting the uh, steering box and the subframe mount and we're just trying to sort of bring all that a bit closer in and more dialed into where we want it. So Brenda's just shaved off some sides and um, now we're gonna do another retest fit. So going off what I said before, um, when we were looking at um, where all this subframe and the pan hard um, and the drag link is all going uh, with the steer in, in relation with the steering box, uh, I'm just, we weren't really happy with the placement and stuff of everything. Um, there was a lot of angles that were just look, looking way off and stuff. So we're gonna, everything's kind of just floating around in there. We're gonna throw the engine and gearbox in and get a really good idea of our tolerances um, and go off that a little bit more as well. And then uh, get a really good idea on where we want stuff. So that's the plan right now, get that engine in. got the engine in um, but we did have to drop this subframe because it was very much going to collide straight to the center of the sub so we've dropped it out and I think we're just gonna have to make our own one um, I know you can get different sumps for these so that they do fit but honestly looking at where their diff is we don't really want it to be a, like a rear sump because there's a really nice cutout uh, how it is already so you can see that there's you can get a lot more up travel if we leave it the way it is at the moment so we're probably just going to leave the sump it, uh, actually i'm hoping it, we can get a pan, sneak a pan hard rod in there i think we can um and then um hopefully snake our steering arm in front of that but that's what we're about to look at anyways and uh, come up with a plan so we'll get the subframe in at the back for the gearbox uh, and then we can send this thing up Alrighty, so this morning um, I've been disassembling the shocks that we're going to run in the front of this thing so that I can get them in there and mock it up uh, height-wise, cycle the diff up and down and whatnot so that it's a lot easier uh, without using the force of the springs. So we'll just get them in there like that 
and figure out where they want to be and make up some mounts. So put the box in there. We uh, had to make a few adjustments of um, placements and stuff, but everything seems to be in a good spot at the moment. Brendo's is just getting the other chassis plate um, tacked up on this side so that we can start doing some shock towers. Um, yeah. So we got her on the ground for the first time. Um, chuck the wheels on. We're just trying to get our ride height sort of sorted at the moment. Um, and then we can figure out where the shock's gonna go in terms of up travel. So just having a bit of a walk around now and it's looking pretty good. It's a bit hard without the tray because it's kind of hard to know, but we've got a decent amount of arch there. Um, and then with a 35, it comes up around here-ish. So I think that's a good happy medium for us to start. So we'll get some shocks in there, I reckon. Okay, so after some discussion, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move the power board and the fuel filter and all that stuff. And we're gonna um, chop out these guards, uh, give them a good notch. And we're gonna get these shock towers going up into the engine bay. So there was a dual battery set up over here. That's gonna be no longer um, because we're making way for shocks. Over here, it's actually not too bad. So we've got plenty of room to muck around with, but definitely gonna have to move some stuff over here. So. We get shirt fire onto it. Get maybe just give them the angle grinder. Yeah. <laughs> um, so shirt fire's gone and cleaned up the um, arches here so that we've got some access now. Um, and just having a quick look, I think what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna run our shock tower. The pipe's gonna go up and over here and then probably shoot it down close to the firewall. That'll give us the most clearance uh, on both sides because we've got this um, big steering box here to deal with. So, and then we can't really go anywhere else because we've got the shaft and whatnot. So that's gonna be our best bet, putting it there, I think. So now that I've got both sides sort of confirmed with that, I can uh, go and bend up some pipe, then we can slap them there. Um, also, we can chop this out a bit and poke our shock through and make up some mounts. So I'm just about to get onto that now. All right, so there's the shock hoop that we've designed up and I'm just gonna go over and bend it now with the 32 MB pipe. So I've just sat the hoop in place. Um, you can see it just goes right in front of the steering box and it drops down near the firewall. Um, and I'm just looking at clearances now and um, height with the bonnet and just trimming it around and getting it settled. So sort of figure out where we want it. Obviously we'll do one on the other side. Um, and then once I'm happy with this, I'll tack it in place and um, we'll have a look at cutting some uh, room for the shock to come through and then once we got that we'll um, figure out our height and then we can make our bracket to the pipe to the shock and then once that's in and tacked we'll cycle it uh, the suspension and then when I'm happy with that we'll make a support bar that goes across the two and then when I'm happy with that um, we'll weld the whole lot so yeah it's looking good I'm trying to keep away from stuff like you got things like the pipe from the turbo and um and the charge pipe that we've got to run so i'm trying to leave some room um as much as possible okay so we've uh tested the hoops and i've just went and put the hoop that i made for the left hand side in the right just to make sure that it clears and fits everything 
um, and I've trimmed I've trimmed the legs up a little bit so that they sit nice and square with the plate. Um, oh yeah, I made the plates as well that they're going to sit on, so we'll get shirt fire to weld them in real nice. But um, they're going to tie when they get welded in. They'll tie in with the bracing, so they'll be nice and strong. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to have going on here. Um, you can see there's a foot plate there. And there's a foot plate down there, there's a foot plate there, and there's one down there. So now I'll leave that one there and I'll go bend up another one and then we'll put it here and then we'll have them sit how we want to sit them and we'll tack them in. All right, so we've just set up our laser and we've just got our um, hoop support bars tacked in. You can see them running in down there, going up and over, down in there. And we've just measured off the laser and everything's within a mil, so we're pretty happy with it. Um, it's a fair bit of chassis flex, to be honest, when we were packing up the hoist to get it sit nice and level. So we're doing our best to actually have everything perfect when you're not really with a, working with a perfect surface anyways, but we'll be, um, we'll be close now. It is absolutely calming down outside. So, I apologize if you can't really hear me. It's bloody loud in here. But, um, so we've cut holes in um, the arches for the shocks. We did a, a hole saw and then we um, chopped off the hole saw um, off like some nice lines just to make it look really neat and then we'll um we'll have some pinch mold that goes around the shock so it looks really nice um now we've just offered the shock up just before but no one could film because uh we had two two of us doing holding stuff so the shock comes up about here we just got our brackets to make now that come off here and then we can tack that up and then the shock will be actually sitting in there so um there he is there We'll get him up in there in a sec. And um, same for this side. And then we can work on attaching the low side to the diff. So um, to figure out where I wanted my shock placed on the hoop, um, I've just gone on full bump. So that's the closest the diff is gonna pretty much get into the engine area and before we start having chaos. So we're on full bump at the moment. Um, I offered the shock up and uh, decided that when the, sh the shock was fully uh, closed, um, we had about an inch and a half left on the shock. And um, that's pretty much where I wanna have my um, shock set to on full bump, just to give it a little bit of safety as well. So um, we get those brackets made up now in the computer, spit them out on the Plessy, and then we'll tack them in. Here we are back at it again. Um, we, at the end of yesterday, we uh, made some shock mounts at the top um, and we just whipped up the bottom ones this morning and tacked them in um, and we just threw the shock in. So we're just about to cycle it and see what happens. So that will be about ride height there, start there. So that's probably, probably a tick over ride height but everything looks pretty nice. Everything looks nice and straight. I'm pretty happy with all the angles. Um, just before we were on full bump, we had about an inch and a bit to spare, which is a little bit of safety. Keep going. Now it's full droop, so it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty stoked with that. So we'll probably knock up the other shock set on the other side and tack them in um, and then get both of them going and maybe even throw some springs in it and um, getting sit on its own weight um, and then we can start looking at doing the pan hard here's a little look at the um, shock mount that we've made so that's over by the pan hard um, so it goes up 115 mil uh, just because the shocks in it are uh, 10 inch, 
or 12 inch, I think, actually. So, um, we could definitely get bigger ones in there. Um, and I didn't want to lower, I didn't want to, sorry, um, drop the hoop up too much because then if you wanted to get a bigger shock in there, you'd have to remove the whole hoop and change all that. So, um, I left the hoop up nice and high so that you can get a bigger shock body in there. And um, all you'd have to do later if you wanted to run a bigger shock was just um, uh, modify this bracket and lower the um, point down lower. So yeah, that's the reason for that. Um, but yeah, we've just um, cut all these up in the plazi and um, tacked it onto the diff. And um, it's all looking pretty good. All right, we're just gonna get this shock in on the other side now. So we got our shock mounts tacked in and upper and lower. And um, Brendo's is just re removing that little welding piece that we put in so that the um, brackets don't move when we tack them. And then we'll get the shock in. Yep, shocks are in. We're in full bump at the moment. Just having a look at clearances and angles and stuff. We've got to definitely do some more trimming on this side, similar to this side, which we've already marked. Um, so we'll mark this guy up on this side now, and then um, we'll go full extension and have a look at everything there. So this is sort of close to where we're going to be ride height wise. Um, the brackets are now vertical uh, just because it's going to be in this position pretty much all the time. So we want to make sure that everything is A1 at this level. So we're pretty happy with all the angles. We've got a decent amount of up travel, which is cool. Um, yeah, everything's looking really good. So I think we're going to make a support bar that goes across the two hoops now. Um, and then once that's done, um, we're going to look at doing a pan hard and then when that's done, everything's going to come out and we will fully weld it all. Or Brenda as well. I'll watch. Yeah. Without a mask. <laughs> yep. Alright, so we just did a quick measurement of um, sort of roughly where we want the pan hard rod. We went, um, so full extension and then full bump and sort of figured out a diagonal plane of where I want um, the pan hard to mount and I decided at ride height exactly where I wanted it. Um, it was relatively between those two points. Um, so this is the chassis rail coming through here and then pan hard and then it drops down to the diff over here. So we'll get this guy um, plazied out and we'll tack it up and have a look how that goes. Okay, so pan hard mount is uh, just one side is tacked in. Um, we're on full bump at the moment and it's all pretty tight compact in there, but everything's looking like it clears. We've got to probably notch the radius arm um, on the bracket a little bit here just to get it on absolutely no touching, but um, otherwise we're pretty good. So if we go up now. So that's about ride height there. And we're looking happy. It's not as long as I would have hoped for the pan hard, um, just because of the space we had uh, and the sump and just trying to avoid things. So it wasn't as long as I was hoping, but to be honest, it actually functions pretty good without with minimal bump steer. So um, pretty happy actually with the turnout. 
So I reckon we'll go ahead and make the other side of this mount. So it'll come down here and then obviously bolt in on this side and um, we'll strengthen it up, we'll do some welding and happy days. So we just got our um, other pan hard mount bracket in. So we've got the two sitting there side by side um, and now we just got to tack Tack the um, forwardmost bracket in and then make some bracing up for it and then we can fully weld it. So I think that's the last suspension component um, for this. So that's pretty much it. All right, so we've just burned in the sway bar. So it's tacked up there and over there. Um, we welded it pretty low because this car is going to sit relatively high and we wanted our best chance of getting this drive shaft to attach and also to be better if we didn't have to run the little drop boxes but um, we still have the option to run them if we have to uh, but yeah look that's pretty good looking all good over here i've just got to now make some bracing plates for all these um, brackets that we've made and I think Surefire is going to pull the engine out now and start going welding ham crazy on it. So, yeah, here we go. Okay, so everything is pretty much finalized. Uh, we're pulling the engine out now for the last time, hopefully. And um, Surefire is going to go crazy welding. <laughs> back at it again Monday morning um, Brendo's has been dropping all of the stuff out of it so we've got the diff over on the bench here um, and we are starting to finally completely weld everything up so um, I've got to make some gusset plates and just a bit of finishing touches and then Brendo's is going to go with a hot glue gun and just smash all of this stuff today hopefully um we've got like a little temporary support plate up here just so that the hoops don't move um and i should be getting some roll cage joiners as well either today or tomorrow um so that i can put that support bar in um so this is the support bar here i don't know if i showed you i can't remember now but this is gonna go across the two hoops and then there'll be roll cage joiners in there so we can get the engine in and out obviously um so yeah, we got another we got delivery this morning. We got some fresh arms and, ra and radius. So we got some fresh arms and um, a pan hard mount and some other stuff. So we'll bust that open now as well. Corolla parts vehicle coming in clutch. Oh. Cheeky transfer and a center. There's a dead body in the back too. <laughs> okay, so while I've been um, busy scouring the marketplace, Facebook marketplace, Shirtfire has gone and welded all of the things in the engine bay. Actually, except for the pan hard mount, because he's waiting on me to make some gusset brackets and stuff. So I'll do that now. And then he'll get the transfer and diff center out of the Corolla. And we can see if that goes on the back of the gearbox, because that's pretty important that it does. Um, and then he's probably going to move over on to welding up this diff and get all those brackets finalized. Then... We can get some paint or we actually got to disassemble everything and then we're going to get some paint and make it all look pretty again. Happy days.
All right, well, that'll do it for this episode. Um, basically, in this one, we've covered all the fabrication side of doing the staffs. And in the next episode, it's going to be painted and we're going to be assembling everything from a bare chassis rail. So if you like seeing the assembly part of the video, episode two is going to be for you.